Hello everybody, and welcome to Kelly Arts and her monthly painting series in which I'm given a prompt and I have a month to figure out how the heck I'm going to turn that into a painting. This month the prompt was eerie, which is very appropriate for October, the spookiest of all the months. It's a time of major transition from the warmth of summer into the coldness of winter. As you can see from the sketch that I am very quickly drawing, we are going to be in the woods once again, lost in the fog this time with unfamiliar shapes looming out of the darkness. Is that a person up ahead? Or just a tree? I am Groot. And here we are with our fresh canvas all set up. Nice drawing, Kelly. We did this over a series of three days, and on this first day we were just mostly blocking in the background, separating the ground from sky to get an idea of what's going to go where. Once again we are going to be using our pouring medium to help blend the colors together. We are blending titanium white, phthalo blue, and raw umber to give the impression of a misty and foggy sky. The feeling we are looking for is an air of mystery and menace. The time of day is uncertain. It could be dawn before the sun has a chance to burn off the fog or dusk with the cloak of darkness about to descend over us. It really depends on if you're an optimist or a pessimist. Coming back to our painting on day two, we're going to be further defining the sky, giving it more contrast with darker colors on the edges and letting the center stay lighter. Now we're going to start to give the impression of distant trees. We're going to be developing layers of trees, with the further away trees being lighter and more miscovered and indistinct. The closer the trees are to the viewer, the darker they will appear, but without detail as there isn't enough light to see anything clearly. With our liner brush now, we're going to be using a lighter mixture of phthalo blue and raw umber and just start drawing some tree trunks, taller on the sides and shorter in the middle. We're not going to be putting a lot of detail here as they're just going to be covered up, so we're going to go with the idea of just indistinct trees for now. On the side, the trees are intended to kind of fall away into shadow and mystery. Only the center is somewhat clear, forcing the viewer to go right up the middle to whatever awaits them there. And here we're taking a larger brush and just kind of smudging and mushing up the trees that I just put in. I still hadn't fully decided on using the airbrush at this point, so I wanted to see if this would work. In the end, I decided it was worth getting out the airbrush and using it for the atmospherics, and I think I made the right decision. I got this airbrush last year to work on a painting for a friend of mine, and I'm still not entirely comfortable using it. But then, part of the goal for this painting project is to get me out of my comfort zone. So I started to block in the ground color and realized I really didn't want to risk having the painting feel slanted. Grabbing my T-square, I just brushed a light line across to indicate where the horizon should be. The idea isn't to be a razor straight line, but just to guide me as I block the foreground in. This area is going to be dark brown, covered in rusty leaves. We're just going to have some of the foreground trees come down and be anchored in and around the leaves when we're done.
There we go. I think a brick time, I guess. Here we're going to make a mix of phthalo blue, black, and some white. We're looking to establish a back fog layer and blend the dark colors together. We want the ground and trees to become indistinguishable from each other. And it's real important when using an airbrush to be very careful as to not spill paint out of the cup. I'm sure the deck looks better painted blue. I know our shoes sure do. Now we dust the area with some lighter color to make it all foggy. Now we're back inside and we're going to start in with the darker trees. These will be in the middle layer, still vague and indistinct, but not as much as the back layer. The taller trees are going to be mostly on the right and left sides, reserving the middle for our mystery friend. We're going to be using a thicker brush and boldly put tree trunks on the canvas. Also, we're going to be adding some branches to help bring up the level of detail a bit more. You can see the paint that I'm using for the trees doesn't match up with the ground cover because of the overspray from the airbrush, so we'll have to deal with that soon. I'm very proud of how I made these trees. I wasn't very conventional with them. The lines are very wiggly and irregular. Here I am taking a darker brown with a one inch painter brush and blocking the ground underneath the layer of trees we just painted, covering that overspray and anchoring them in space. I'm leaving a bit of the earlier ground layer that's been misted over by the airbrush still visible, so that helps suggest distance. And now, the star of our show makes their appearance. Using a darker version of the ground cover, I block it in, and then I'll work a lighter mixture of the color on top of it to help pop it out a bit, but leaving a dark gap at the bottom. I'm also going to add in some more trees on either side in the lighter color that we have, making the central figure move forward in space a bit more. Is that the gap where the tree rotted at the base? Or is that a space between somebody's legs? I am root. With my wide fan brush, I start adding a rich layer of burnt sienna to the ground, suggesting a thick layer of fallen leaves. The problem with doing this is it looks great when the paint's wet. It's the color I want. But as anyone who's painted their house can tell you, paint generally dries darker than when it's first put on. All right, we're back outside for a second airbrushing. Let's see how this goes. I'm going to do some darker here and then some lighter up here. And then when I go back inside for the last stuff, I'm gonna put some darker trees in front. Maybe I'll punch up the leaves a little bit. And we'll see how that goes. Take it back to Editor Kelly. Thank you, Kelly. Let's blend everything together with some darker color. Going to the top and the sides a bit, and I'm totally not going to hit my deck with the overspray. Nope, not going to happen. You can see with the darker misting that we really got nice blending between the trees and the ground.
What did I just do? <laughs> Nothing like a panic attack to help focus the mind on what you're doing. Right, Kelly? Right. Anyhow, finishing up the airbrushing with a lighter color to hopefully sell the idea of a layer of fog. No, I totally didn't borrow this before graduating high school. Okay, we're going to finish the painting now. Now that we're back inside, we're going to bring out some dark paint and put on the foreground layer of trees. We have entered the home stretch. As you can see, the paint for the leaves have dried more and they're not as brilliant as they were before. I was kind of hoping they would stay the same color as the wet paint, but we'll address that shortly. And now we watch a piece of paper fall. What did you do, Kelly? I don't know either. Maybe you should tape up your reference photos better. She doesn't listen. She never listens to me. Taking my liner brush, I'll start adding little branches, but not too many, just enough to give it a sense of detail. I'm not going to add shading to these trees like I had done in the August painting. These are all going to be pretty much silhouetted. Okay, now that I've gotten the trees the way I like them, I'm going to add another layer of leaves so they don't look like they're floating above everything. Plus I want to deal with the whole orange thing. Now I'm going to take some orange and some yellow and add it to the burnt sienna so that when the paint dries for the leaves, they're lighter than what they're doing now. Very happy with how this painting turned out. It really pulled together in the end. I had to go back after I finished filming this and touch up a couple of trees on the left side. It's hard to see clearly while I'm making these as I'm trying to stay out of the way of the camera so I miss little details that I wouldn't ordinarily. And the signature. Et voilà. Good job, Kelly. Now what you've been waiting for, the glamour shots. If you like this content and want me to continue to make wonderful paintings like this, please like and share the video. And if you're so inclined, hit the subscribe button. See you next time.